Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I want to do lower limb anatomy. Quite basic. I'm going to keep it simple for today's video. We're just going to go over the anatomical structures. Not really going to talk too much depth on each structure. We'll save them for future videos. We're going to go from below the fetlock down. So we're going to go the lower part of the digit. The fetlock is quite a complex structure. So I'll do a whole video on the fetlock in itself. So just below the fetlock we have these four bones. So the fetlock joint would be here, articulating with this surface of this bone, here and here. But as I said, we'll, do, we'll save that for another video. Okay, so there's a few bones here I just want to go through first. The first one being our proximal phalanx. Now this is also ref often referred to as the long pastern. And this is the biggest bone out of the three. Followed on from there we have the short pastern or the middle phalanx, followed then by the distal phalanx or the pedal bone or the coffin bone, has quite a few names. Okay, so we have two joints here and here. This first joint here, so this joint here is the joint that's formed from the proximal phalanx and the middle phalanx. Now, every anywhere on the horse, every time we have a articulation, it normally involves the name of the two bones either side. Now these are phalanx bones, this is proximal so it's closer to the body and this is distal so towards the ground is distal towards the body is proximal and we have phalanxes which are the bones below the, the, the fetlock so we have a proximal inter meaning between the two so proximal inter phalangeal or phalanx similar uh, so proximal inter phalangeal joint or articulation so therefore you've probably guessed it that this joint here is the distal towards the ground interphalangeal articulation or joint. Okay, so there's two joints. This one is a relatively simple joint, just articulates between the two bones, very limited movement. Uh, however, this one here, very complex, it involves the navicular bone or the distal sesamoid bone, distal towards the ground, and we call it it's a complex joint because it involves three bones. Okay, so they're the bones. So we'll take a little closer look at these bones here. I might just come a little bit closer. Okay, so here we have the three bones again, the three phalanxes. Directly underneath here is this bone here, which is the navicular bone. Okay, so, so they're the bones. So now let's go on to the soft tissue structures that uh, surround these bones. So here we have a specimen or a sagittal section of the foot. Again, this is cut off just below the fetlock, uh, but it does clearly show the rest of the hoof. So if we go around here, we'll start from the most external sort of structures. We come down here, we have the skin. You can even see the hair follicles on this, on this specimen. You can see the hair follicles. Yep, okay. So there you can see the hair follicles. Then we come down to this area here, which is the coronary band. Now the cor inside the coronary band we have the coronary cushion and that falls inside the, a groove called the coronary groove and that cushion goes right the way around the sort of circumferal dorsal aspect of the, of the foot and it actually produces the hoof wall. So directly below that then we have the hoof wall and we can see the pigmentation change as the hoof wall gets closer to the bone. We lose that pigmentation it becomes very white. So coming round to the bottom, the distal fringe of the distal phalanx, uh, and that secretes the, the white line. We'll talk about the anatomy of the actual, the surface anatomy of the hoof in another video, so be sure to check that one out. But as we come round, we see the horny sole. Even further back, we get the horny frog. Now the horny frog is, is the big sort of V-shaped structure on the bottom of the hoof, and it lies directly below what's called the digital cushion. So you can see how the digital cushion forms the back half of the foot. And the digital cushion can be displaced depending on the loads placed upon it. And you can see how well it forms the bulb of heel area around the back here. So when you get a flattening of the digital cushion, you the digital cushion has to go somewhere. So it goes out the back of the foot. So you have a sort of extended uh, bulb of heel region. 
um, out the back here. So this is very susceptible to changing its shape. Okay, so from the, uh, the horny frog in this digital cushion region, we come up the back of the leg and we've got the, the epidermis of the skin with the hair follicles like we just explained. Okay, so inside here we have the common digital extensor tendon. Now this originates from the common digital extensor muscle higher up the limb um, and it travels all the way down the frontal aspect of the leg right down to this bone here, the distal phalanx. And it has a very strong attachment to the extensor process we call it. Now if I was to show you the extensor process on our bone specimen here. So the extensor process is this tip of the pedal bone or the distal phalanx. So it's quite a wide attachment, probably takes in this entire area here. Nice and broad for a good strong attachment. So then the sort of opposing tendon would be the deep digital flexor tendon. Now again, this originates from uh, the muscle of its similar name. So the, this will be the deep digital flexor muscle. Travels down the back of the leg, comes all the way under here, under the, this, this joint, under this navicular bone or the distal sesamoid bone and attaches to the solar border of the distal phalanx. So it comes down the back of the leg here, underneath the navicular bone and attaches to this area here on the pedal bone and we call that the semilunar line or the semilunar crescent and again, again it's a very wide or broad attachment very strong muscle, strong tendon, and it attaches here. So you can see the forces that are already getting placed on this pedal bone. So we've got the strong attachment from the common digital extensor tendon here, and a strong attachment from the, um, the deep digital flexor tendon underneath here. So this tendon runs up over this um, navicular bone, but to protect the navicular bone, we have a navicular bursa. Now a bursa is, a, is a, a sac, shall we say, of synovial fluid. Now synovial fluid is, um, has a high viscosity, so it's, it's very sort of absorbent of any concussion or friction forces. Um, however, we can see the area where this navicular bursa would have been. If we get a little bit closer to the camera. So you can see this area here is where our navicular bursa would have been and it protects the navicular bone from the deep digital flexor tendon as it runs over that bone acts as a fulcrum giving a greater surface area for the joint but also make sure that the angle of attachment of the deep digital flexor tendon stays the same at all times. Okay, so the navicular bone also has um, its own ligaments. So you can see the distal impar ligament here at the bottom which is attaching it to the distal phalanx and we can see just what's left of our suspensory of the navicular ligament and this is a ligament that originates from the distal extremity of the proximal phalanx travels down, forms a sling underneath that navicular bone keeping it in place. Okay. <clears throat> There's one more ligament I want to talk about it's this ligament here and this is the straight sesamoidian ligament this originates from the proximal sesamoid bones that form part of the uh, fetlock and they travel down the back right in the middle of um, the proximal phalanx and form a very strong attachment to the complementary fibrocartilage which is found on this tip here of the middle phalanx. Now if we just take a closer look at the bones, we can see that these bones have a really hard, dense outer surface. This is cortical bone. And then as we come towards the center of these bones, we, we see this sort of honeycomb structure. Well, that is our cancellous bone. And we can see it on each or every one of these bones here. We can see the outer, harder cortical bone, inner cancellous bone, and a very good example of where the medullary cavity would be on this bone here. Now, I do go into more detail on bones. Do check out my bones and osteology video. Um, there's so much to talk about in regards to bones. Everyone sees them as these dead bones, um, but they're not. They're alive and they have so much going on. Be sure to check out that video as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you were able to learn something from it. I will do another video in the future and go into more detail in all these areas. So be sure to hit this subscribe button just here. 
Check out my other two videos. And if you have any comments, any suggestions on future videos, drop them in the comments section below and I shall see you on the next video. Thank you, goodbye.